Horns up, talking in Texas podcast. Fisher Tosopolis, Snacks Crider, and Quan Cosby are not with us today, but they will be back hopefully next time, presumably next time, as we are in the throes of summer. Football just right around the corner. Really, we'll pick that up post July 4th. Right now, though, Hoops News, Ron Holland. Well, we said it today. At least he's not going to Arkansas. And we had to school some of our Massachusetts friends on the Arkansas rivalry, rivalry between yeah, back Texas. To the- Back to the Southwest days. The good old Southwest Southwest days. And Arkansas was the only non-Texas school that was a part of that conference, actually, which is interesting. And I I told our buddies, I said, go play NCAA uh, football 2005, and I guarantee you, while it's not named, the Arkansas-Texas game will have the little rivalry game logo next to it. But we're not in the same conference as them this year, but we will be next year. <laughs> it's coming back. It's very and true. This, this rivalry very much will come back. I mean, I think we always have a target on our back, of course, being the Texas Longhorns, being um, the University of Texas at Austin. They're going to be, before we really go into the Ron Holland of it all, some, some eminent rivalries on the horizon once we get to the SEC. And I know... We have to figure out how things get shaken out with divisions um, Mm -hmm. and just the split of the conference. But we've got Oklahoma. Obviously, they're going with us. Mizzou's already there. Mizzou was not our friend when we were playing against them in the Big 12. They will not be happy to see us. Arkansas, you mentioned. Arkansas, who I already mentioned, who Nick said is probably a top three rivalry historically with Texas. You've got... A&M, Oklahoma, and Arkansas was what he listed. I think, you know, of recent, of course, Tech, who I would probably, maybe, I, I'd probably put them ahead of Arkansas just because how much that rivalry has meant in the last 25 years. Baylor. Um, a, a Baylor and TCU, of course. Um, even even Oklahoma State, K-State, literally every Big 12. Kansas, game, right? Kansas, like, yeah, I was about to say Kansas yeah. and basketball. Like, I would think Bama, like, jumps I, into do those. You feel, I don't think there's too much animosity between us and Kansas. Yes, there is. I'll tell you why. Not, not comparatively. No, well, I disagree. I agree, and I did. What's the biggest? The biggest game on the basketball schedule, pretty much every the two biggest games in the basketball schedule in interleague play are Baylor and Kansas. And that's because they're great, and that's why I think when we get to the SEC, one of our biggest rivals automatically becomes Alabama. They become, and, a, and I would say I would throw in LSU as well. I was about beat me to the punch. I would say LSU because they are the top dogs. Georgia, well, there's like, I mean, we have Georgia boys, you know, there is that mutual respect. They're not really, I think there's also that similarity just in Athens and Austin oftentimes get compared. I know Austin is way bigger of a city, but the vibe is, is said to be similar. Um, Both of those cities are beloved. Just, I, I would say like by the nation from a general standpoint, I think that we will probably see a Georgia rivalry bloom, but to a lesser degree in comparison to, Alabama, LSU, Arkansas. I think those Less three teams, a, and of course Oklahoma, that nothing will change there. Less of a rivalry, like I'm trying to think of the new. I'll, I'll give you. That... I'll give you this example. I think that the Georgia Texas game, when they play each other, there will be a lot of animosity. But I will also, I also believe that there will be many a times on social media at your local watering hole where Georgia fans and Texas fans come together and hate Alabama fans, LSU fans, Auburn fans even more. So I think they they will be like grouped together, but also rivals in that kind of capacity. Like everyone who's not a Yankees fan kind of hates the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. There are people that do like them. Everyone hates Alabama. Everyone hates Alabama. And then LSU is like... Everyone hates us, frankly, too. Everyone, That's true. LSU, though, I would say the fan base is so much more... Like, there's just so much more ludicrous... Rabid. Of the, it's rabid. It's aggressive. It's in your, I mean, it's hilarious it's in your face. It's funny. It's, it's brash. It's, they wear it every which way sleeves, chest on their forehead. Like it's, they bleed purple and gold and not that the Georgia fans don't because their fan base is also insane, but I felt they've handled winning with a bit more, with a bit more class, a bit more, a bit more private school versus public school, honestly. I hate to like put it like that, but that's just like I mean, kind I, of what it I is. I love when LSU wins, and obviously I have that tie, but I think there are a lot of people who are not from Louisiana who also root for LSU and have come to really uh, enjoy them winning. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people took a side in the women's uh, college basketball tournament 
and people loved Angel Reese. They mm-hmm. loved what she stood for, what she represented, how she carries herself, her swagger. Um, you know, talking to her talking about Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm I'm just excited to have all these teams and to really you know w- what the rivalries were in the Big Twelve. I think they will become even greater than that once we get to the SEC. But of course, um, you know, talking about Arkansas, rumors came out after Ron Holland had made the decision that once he undeclared, once he decommitted from the University of Texas, it was just between Arkansas and the G League. And mm-hmm. that, those were, that was the reality. Mm-hmm. And so if that was the reality, and I, you know, wait, he's not on the show, so I can kind of say I told you so. I told you so to, to our buddy, Nikki Snacks Kreider. There was no way that he was going to come back to our program. It just didn't make sense. That's not the way guys operate. No way. Uh, the transfer portal is a little different, but guys that are committing – um, that, that's how this is the new normal, right? Mm-hmm. Is that guys will commit and they will commit really early and then they will decommit and they'll go somewhere else. They get more money. Um, or they want to go to the G league or they want to go play in Australia in the NBL, whatever it is. And so for him, he'll, he'll be headed to the G league. I was watching as soon as I saw that number one reaction was, okay, I'm glad it's not Arkansas. Number mm-hmm. two, because on the off chance that he stays, we go to the SEC and we have to play Eric Musselman. And he becomes their best player in year two as a sophomore. Ugh, that's gonna suck. And I don't. Well, I don't to... think he'd be a sophomore though. I don't think you think he'd be a sophomore. I, that's not the expectation. But in watching some of his highlights, he's one of I the think typical it, Texas think, dudes that should stay. I think, it's a, <laughs> I think it's a mistake that he's going to the G. I don't think his body's ready. I think he needs to like, I think he needs to fill out and, and he will just by getting older. Um, but he has a lot that he can work on with his game. I mean, he's so dynamic. He's so explosive, so athletic. He plays above the rim when he gets into the paint is tenacious dunker, but the ball handling isn't quite there yet. I think it, it could be a tough time for him in the G league. Um, I don't think he's going to dominate. I don't think he'll even put up the same type of performance that Jalen Green did. Um, maybe more more Jonathan Kaminga esque is what I would expect. But he's very talented, and he could have easily slotted in as our starting three, and we would have been able to run a really big lineup out there with Shed and Desu, uh, who played golf with our buddy at Pitch and Putt the other day. Shout out to and to Daniel Carr, D. Max Carr's Shiner, guy. and Max Shiner. Yeah, um, Abe Froman. So, well, the sausage king of Chicago. <laughs> I love that little shout out you gave him. Thank you. I, I, um, we, we still need to address the the wing position, but I think outside of that, I, I, re- I still really like our starting lineup with Hunter and, uh, and Admus and Desu and and uh, Shedrick at the five. So, like, what are we see. pissed about? Shedrick is a great addition. Desu is a great stay. Like Hunter's a great return. Admus is a guy who's been there in the heat of the moment, but the most pressure, like having a ball at the same time, having a ball with Oral Roberts. And I think when we brought in Serge Jabari Rice, we weren't like, oh, this guy's the this is the guy. Like, you know, it was like, okay. Like cool. He was our like, sixth man. I mean, he was just, he was six man. Like, all right, fun. Like whatever. Like you don't know what these other guys that we're bringing in. Um are, are going to do necessarily. And yes, we do not get Caleb love, but that's fine. We have Admus, we have Hunter that like returning Hunter was almost more important. I actually think it's also really important that, that Holland picked the G league as opposed to going to Arkansas. Cause I think it, it keeps a little bit more of the integrity of coach Terry's recruiting ability. Sure. It, it makes it not about in both the cases of Johnson and of Holland. Now it wasn't about another program beating us out, outpaying us or having a quote unquote better coach that could get them further in the tournament or develop them more into being a one and done and really like, you know, starting their NBA um, scouting process on the right foot. It's simply because these guys want to go play professional basketball and they feel like they can give themselves a better shot by going to the G league and going to the NBL. So I, I think, um, I mean, it's a little bit of a like silver lining, I guess, because we are losing two five star recruits. But um, I, again, I don't think it hurts Terry as much as people will probably make it out to be for you know the next few weeks and into the season. We'll certainly hear those murmurs come back. Yeah, and guys can always like I'm looking at the train like Grant Nelson. I don't know if we'll get him, but he's pulled out of the draft from North Dakota State. Uh, 
I would love to that see. Guy's him nasty. That guy's nasty. He's dope. Yeah, I mean, he might. He's probably that guy. Literally screams Iowa, and probably will go there. But like, sure. okay, Julian Phillips is going to remain in the NBA draft, and he was going to transfer. Uh, that's unfortunate for him, honestly, because he's from Texas, and I would have loved to see. Uh, I would have loved to see him. I mean, look, we wish for the best for these kids, but selfishly, I would love to see him go. Right. Um, but guys like LJ Cryer left Baylor and he went to Houston. Like that would have sucked if Ron Holland did that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot of guys who are still guys available too. Like I'm trying to scroll through. Uh, Kalum, Arthur Kaluma is available. Right. Right. What if we go get, what if we go get him? What's the latest of this dude? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't checked in much on Kaluma. Um, but if he's running our three, like we're really big. We're really big and really long from the three to five positions. And uh, we would be a true test for teams or, you know, he comes off the bench, I guess, but uh, that's not the type of guy that's going to transfer somewhere. If he's not going to start right away, he's looking to, to up his, his stock in the draft for sure. I saw some cool photos of Marcus Carr working out in a, in a Lakers uniform. Um, that was nice. Hopefully, you know, just rooting for our guys that are there that are doing the thing that are hoping to get picked up on a summer league roster and get an mm-hmm. opportunity. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of where we're at with, with the hoops team and you know, more information will I'm sure come out as the transfer portal, as those, those other names that you mentioned and more. Um, that Chendall gosh, Weaver kid. That shakes out. Yeah. Where's he from? He's from Arlington. UT Arlington. Yep. He had, he averaged as a freshman last year. He's from Texas. He averaged 10, five and two. Yeah. 40% from three. Like, all right. Like, let's I like see. that a lot. I like, yeah. How can you hate that? Like it's a guy Brock's still with us too. I mean, we He'll know he's leave. just lunch pail, hard hat guy. who's going to come in and give us 110% effort every single game and be a yeah. really good vocal leader. He's, He's like the Udonis Haslam. He's like the Perry Ellis of college basketball at this point. <laughs> now he is. But he's he like five. Like, yeah, but he actually ended up playing good minutes. And we got that kid, Zarek Yama yeah. from UTEP. He's he's a sophomore, so he'll be a junior, I believe. So he's dude, he's six eight, two thirty. Right? Like he played twenty minutes a game last year, had seven seven points and four boards. What if he's good? What if he's an animal in the paint off the bench? I I, I believe it. Um, qu- quick little pivot to some football, and basically the only football news for for UT this week. But uh, Arch not in attendance for the start of summer workouts because he is graduating from Newman High School. <laughs> nice. um, so shout out, shout Newman. out. It's big. We got. We always give a big shout out to uh, to Newman. Yeah, shout out to Newman. Uh, you have a good buddy, you're, Eli Sturbko. You, you guys are you're uh, you no, know what? He's, he's, he's yeah he's, he's a buddy of mine as well. You know, he's and a buddy I was I, well. I was thinking about this. He is um, undoubtedly, and I haven't seen a ton of I am football tape. To be completely honest, it's not like I've watched any other I am QBs uh, mm-hmm. intramurals. I'm talking about from any other teams outside of when I played at Texas. You know, six years ago when we were in college, he was the best quarterback i saw yeah like those are field throws a great ball best best intramural qb i saw no I'll, I'll, i will pass the, i will tell him to listen to this well, at least heart. he threw the prettiest ball he, he wasn't quite as much of a dual threat as some of the other guys <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely not a, that guy raced yeah. him in gulf shores alabama drunk one time the guy's the farthest thing from a dual threat but he could he could throw a hell of a football yeah, that's that's for right. sure. He, right. yeah, New- Newman's finest. Yeah, yeah, Newman's finest. Absolutely. I text baseball. Shout out to them. Play the Raging Cajuns to start off college uh, in round one. Yeah, at the Alex Rodriguez Memorial Steroid Park in Coral Steroid Games. to heaven. <laughs> steroid to heaven. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, steroid to heaven. Uh, so wishing these guys. The best. Uh, Ty Madden apparently, you know, tearing it up. Uh, and I was reminded that Bryce Elder, who um, has been epic for the Atlanta Braves, Texas Longhorn. I didn't even realize. And I'll admit what position that. is he? 
pitcher. He's been epic for the Braves, dude. He's going to go sub two. He's a top five in the area in the league in th- through two months. Like I, I anticipate so a, pe- a, pe- a guy in their pen. No starter. He's he's a wow. starter. Yeah, he's been dope. He's been really dope, which is crazy. What's the list of the guys that are? I'm looking it up right now. Um, Texas, who are in the MLB? Let me get it. Bryce Elder, he was a fifth round pick. Um, University of Texas. God, baseball reference, football re- reference is just the best. Yeah. So, where is? Do we know where Melendez is right now? I you know he's in with Arizona's farm. Arizona, but do you yeah. Know he's what? definitely not like I wouldn't imagine he's like moving. Like he just got drafted last year. Right. Right. Well, Elder was he was the only guy in the 2020 draft. Yeah, that could happen. Round, round five guy from our from our squad. Oh, he's I, an, realize, I, I always forget that Belt is a is a Longhorn. Brandon Belt. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like the best. He's like one of the best right now. Melendez in A plus is seven homers, twenty one ribbies, three sixty three on base percentage, two sixty four hour. He's probably got to kick the average, and he's stri- he, the strikeouts got to go downhill for this kid. But he'll. Yeah. I mean, he was amazing in Texas last year, and you know he's obviously a prime hitter so he's 23 i I hope hopefully the next the next two years are going to be very telling for him um oh wow dylan peter's the pitcher i didn't realize uh definitely but bryce bryce elder yeah Corey canavels houston street drew stubbs we've had on the show cameron rupp we haven't had a ryan roberts who hosts a show with uh joe de leon did uh uh, did workman get a ring yeah with the socks yeah, Brandon Workman for sure. He might have two. There you go. Shout out him. Let's see. Let's see, he might have two. Yep. Yep. He was on that thirteen Man. team. He was on that thirteen team, dude. Yeah, he's got two rings. That's kind of swag, honestly. There you go. There you go. We might have to. Let's get him on soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have to, the thing is, like, candidly speaking, with the baseball players. They're just not active on Cody Clemens, Roger's son. They're right. not as active on social. Right. So right. for our listeners out there getting, getting and not just because we want them to post and all that you hoopla. It's like getting in touch with them is a bit more cumbersome when they're not on social. Yeah. I mean, they, they played and they got out of it and they're on to their second act. So I don't blame them. Even though Quan has everyone's number, including Obama. <laughs> yeah well hopefully next week when we all <laughs> hop back on the mic and there's some more updates on texas football texas baseball texas basketball um that we can provide for the the horns up squad out there nikki snacks will be back and and so will uh six so will Quan cosby the big six will be back yeah yeah with nikki snacks It'll be great um and then yeah let's you know what screw it let's like let's try to get one of these baseball guys on yeah that'd be awesome cool cool all right hook them horns we'll see you guys next time hook them